YouTube, what's going on? If you're new here, my name's Roger. I own a company called QBO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. In today's video, we are checking out something you've most likely already seen, but if you haven't, you're definitely in for a treat. Uh, I'm talking about the BRN180S upper receiver from Brownells. Now, if you're not familiar with the BRN 180, I'll give you a short explanation of how and why this upper exists. Brownells has a retro line of rifles and components. Um, the BR 180 is their modern day take on the AR-18, which was created in the 1960s by Armalite for the military, and then called the AR-180 when made into a semi-auto version for the civilian market. It's very similar to the AR-15, however, there are a few key differences that we'll discuss in this video. Um, this design was a collaborative effort by Brownells, PWS, and FM Products. Now, before we get into the specs, I always like to tell you guys how I came about getting these products in for a review. Um, I've always been a customer of Brownells for like over 15 years now. Um, if you're not familiar with Brownells, they are one of the largest suppliers of firearms parts, accessories, and gear. Um, they've been around since the 1930s. Uh, I've been toying around with the idea of getting a SIG MCX, and then I came across this platform, and I decided to purchase one. Um, I picked it up on their website when it was on sale for about $750 a couple months back. More on why I went with this over the SIG MCX later on in this video. Okay, now for the specs. Uh, for this build, I went with one of my favorite Forge Low receivers, the Aero Precision M4E1. Um, from there, I put on the BRN 180S upper receiver, which is machined from 7075 T6 aluminum with a hard coat anodized finish. Um, there are various M lock attachment points along the free float rail for all of your gadgets. It also comes with a 10.5 inch barrel chambered in 223 Wild with a 1 8 twist. Um, something really cool about this platform is that the gas is adjustable from the front. A simple twist of the piston and it goes from a U, meaning unsuppressed, to an S for suppressed. Um, we found this very useful and we will definitely show you why during the range portion of this video. The BR-180S comes with a bolt carrier group that glides smoothly on a pair of guide rods. Um, they replicated the AR-180 bolt design with a nitrite bolt as well. So I'm sure you've looked at this setup and realized that there is no buffer tube, buffer, or a buffer spring. Um, that's what's great about this platform. The entire operating system is captured in the upper receiver, making the need for a buffer tube non-existent. This allows you to add cool things like this FS-1913 brace from SB Tactical to the back, um, which can be folded for storage or even kept folded when firing multiple rounds. If you want to run a 1913 brace, you'll need to use something like this KNS Precision Picatinny adapter. Make sure to choose the width flange option if you are using a standard lower receiver. Uh, as always, I did add a couple of things that I prefer, one being the T3 compensator from 2A Armament. Um, it's one of my favorite compensators on the market as it keeps the gun extremely flat and allows for suppressor using a standard birdcage design for attachment like uh, my Griffin Armament M4 SDK. I also added the Super Tricon Trigger from Geisley. Um, I was talking with my buddy over at Geisley who was telling me that I had to try this trigger out. Um, he knows my favorite trigger from them is the SSAE. Um, I told him that I was putting this video together and he sent me one out for the video. Um, I have to say though that this is probably my new favorite trigger. It's an awesome two-stage trigger and they describe the second break so accurately. Um, they call it a carrot-like second stage break. And when I think about it, that's exactly what it reminds me of. Um, the light snap of a carrot breaking in two is exactly how I would describe that second break. It's awesome. Anyway, the trigger was designed in cooperation with Jeff Gonzalez, who is a former Navy SEAL. Uh, the hybrid bow design gives you the benefits of both a curved and flat face trigger. We all found it very easy to use while out on the range. Speaking of the range, let's move on to that footage. We filmed this during Independence Day weekend. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July. Um, but Annie was in town visiting, so she, Eric, and I headed out to our shooting spot and ran about 750 rounds through the gun. I'm happy to report that we did not have one single malfunction during our range session. Um, we definitely wanted to shoot more rounds, but it was 104 degrees outside, so we couldn't stay out as long as we normally do. Um, for this range session, I threw on my Comp M5 from Aimpoint with a ScalarWorks 193 mount. Uh, we got a quick 50 yard zero and set up various cardboard and steel targets from TA targets. We ran some transition drills, some build drills, and a close-up drill shooting the gun in its folded configuration. Uh, we all found the gun to run really smooth. The charging handle does reciprocate, and I know that for some, that always brings up some concerns. I'm happy to say, though, that it didn't interfere with us using the gun at all. Even Eric, who is our lefty, didn't notice it.
One thing that we all did notice was how light the setup was. The BRN180S upper only weighs four pounds. Um, this helps with keeping the gun lightweight when adding all of our components to the gun, which is great. Um, now I know with a side charger on the right side of the gun, uh, this can also bring up some concerns with those more familiar with charging handle style of an AR-15. So I wanted to demonstrate reload methods and a double feed malfunction clearance to put those worries to rest. Since this is similar to the AR-15 platform, you can always drop the bolt by releasing the bolt catch. Uh, I am using the American time bolt catch from Geisley as it's oversized and easy to use. You can also just come from underneath the gun um, using your support hand to charge the weapon similar to an AK-47. If you're a lefty, it's even easier as you don't have to come from underneath the gun to reach the charging handle. Uh, when clearing a double feed, the movement will be the same. Your left hand locks the bolt catch, your right hand pulls the bolt to the rear. Um, these are things that I thought some people would wonder about, so I just wanted to make sure I included them in this review. Now you know we had to shoot this thing suppressed. A quick turn of the piston like I said earlier and we were running this with my Griffin Armin M4 SDK uh, with no problems whatsoever. This upper is a great suppressor host and as usual we found shooting suppressed to be much more pleasant. So guys, my overall thoughts on the BRN180S from Brownells. Um, it's awesome, it's lightweight, it's accurate, it's well made, everything that I would expect from Brownells. Uh, from about 30 yards away, Eric and Annie were plinking away a six inch hostage taker steel plate with ease. Now back to some of my statements earlier. Why this over the SIG MCX? Well, for me, it's 100% to do with the weight. Um, I've always wanted a SIG MCX, but after handling it at a SHOT Show, I was immediately turned off by how heavy it was. The 11 and half inch pistol version of the MCX comes in at seven and a half pounds, 7.4 pounds to be exact, um, without ammo or accessories. So some of you out there might be saying, Bro, it's only seven pounds. Uh, and to that, I say this. Now, when you shoot as much as I do, even the lightest gun gets heavy at the end of a long range day. Um, I've also always wanted an AR style gun that could shoot multiple rounds when folded. Uh, I thought about the situations where I've been a passenger in a patrol vehicle while my partner was driving or during plane clothes or surveillance operations where I could see myself having to engage a threat at my window close up. Um, that's where I think that this platform could be extremely useful. So if you're looking for an awesome truck gun, this might be what you need. Um, Brownells does offer a lower receiver specific to this upper so that you don't have to buy an adapter plate like I did. Um, however, at the time of my purchase, it was out of stock. Luckily, they designed this platform with the intention of it being able to be used with any standard lower receiver. So you're good to go if you can't find theirs in stock. Lastly, guys, some things I did not like. Um, honestly, it's only one main thing, the gun gets hot. Uh, especially when shooting suppressed and when it's 104 degrees outside. You'll notice in the video that we had to utilize my Vertex glove uh, on our support hand to continue shooting as the handguard did get to the point where it was too hot to hold. Uh, I kind of knew this was going to happen though because it is a piston operated gun. Um, but other than that guys, I think that it's a solid platform um, and I think that I'll be using it a lot in trainings and classes. 
Well guys, that's going to do it for our review of the Brownells BRN180S. Uh, I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please give us a thumbs up down below as that does help us out. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as we post new videos every week. If you wanna support our channel and our content, please check out the Patreon link down below. Patreon members get first access to new content, new gear, discounts, and giveaways. Um, they're a big reason why we can continue to create the content that you guys all check out. Um, guys, thanks again for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Let's see that new tattoo, dog. All right. Hey, yo. James Strickland killing it. Stand by. Stand by. God. Stand by. Stand by. Three, two. Stand by. Four rounds. Two. Four. Nope.